the great neck in the West. News about Long Island for the people of Long Island. 24 hours every day. This is News 12 Long Island. And now, the evening edition. Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Feldman. And I'm Melba Tolliver. Charges tonight against the second suspect arrested in connection with the World Trade Center bombing. With the very latest on the investigation, News 12's Joe Moskowitz at police headquarters in Manhattan. Joe? Scott and Melba, remember at 5 o'clock when I said an FBI official said no more arrests were imminent. Well, perhaps they weren't imminent. Perhaps they were actually in progress. At any rate, three more suspects were rounded up in Brooklyn this afternoon. That means now a total of five people are in custody. One was arrested yesterday afternoon, a second one yesterday evening. He was arrested for obstruction of justice, but now he is being held without bail. Uh, police say that uh, they found evidence linking him to uh, the other uh, expected bombers. In the meanwhile, a very upbeat William Sessions got a first-hand look at the destruction. These pictures are worth a thousand pounds of explosives. It took at least that much to cause this much damage. Sessions, the embattled FBI chief, could use some good publicity, and he was very proud of the work the Bureau has done in handling the investigation. I think we're very pleased with the progress, but more than the progress, we're pleased with the splendid total across-the-board cooperation with every single agency involved here. And this is some of the damage Sessions saw. PA systems, and there was no announcements because, as you can see back here, it was totally destroyed, and all uh, the two towers were controlled from, from this area. Within a matter of seconds, offices uh, yeah. had become construction debris. Cars were destroyed. And this twisted piece of metal was, at one point, a van. Sessions described it as a war zone, and as with all wars, there were a number of casualties. Five dead, and they're still searching for the body of Wilfred Mercado. Well, I myself spent an hour and a half with Mrs. Mercado and with uh, Willie's father, uh, trying to go through what's happening. And obviously, there's nobody here who can understand, unless you've been through comparable things, the grief and... and how shaky and, and uh, upset she must be. Well, uh, Port Authority officials hope within the next couple of days they will be able to go down to ground zero where the bomb was detonated and they will be able to recover Mercado's body. They also hope to be able to recover more evidence of the actual bomb and perhaps round up a few more people. Uh, as we said at the beginning of this newscast, three more people are in custody, but by the time the night edition starts at 10 o'clock, there could be more because arrest warrants are being executed in uh, New Jersey uh, for more suspects. Back to you in the studio, Scott and Melba. So the question is now, who is Mohammed Salama? Was he involved in the bombing at the World Trade Center? News 12's Matt Jablo was in Jersey City today, and he has some answers. His name is now synonymous with terrorism. Mohammed Salama, a 25-year-old father of four from Jersey City, who came to the U.S. five years ago who now stands accused of being involved in the bombing of the World Trade Center. At a press conference today in Jersey City, authorities said they believe Salama is a Palestinian who belongs to a radical Muslim group in Jersey City. Yesterday, federal agents raided Salama's apartment where they found the evidence that led to his arrest, including tools and wiring and manuals on electronic circuitry and electromagnetic devices. We do not have uh, uh, a, in any way, shape or form a, a, um, a, a politically active anti-American uh, foreign community in any way, shape, or form. This is a community where we also do know about those individuals who justify concern. Authorities say Salama belongs to the Al Salam Mosque here on Kennedy Boulevard in Jersey City. It's on the third floor of a very unassuming building that from the outside one would never suspect has anything to do with the bombing of the World Trade Center. The mosque is allegedly headed by Sheikh Omar Abdel Rahman, who has been known to encourage his followers to use violence as a means of spreading the Sheikh's form of Muslim fundamentalism. The man charged and acquitted with the 1990 murder of Rabbi Meir Kahana is also reportedly a follower of Abdel Rahman. About the Sheikh, Jersey City police would only say they have an active file on him. About Salama, police say he was not known to them before the bombing of the Trade Center. Today, the mosque was locked tight. Nobody answered the door. This man who spoke little English was surprised to learn the regular Friday prayer service was not being held. You've prayed here before? Uh, th three days I, I, I pray here. Just three days. 
Nobody I spoke with today in Jersey City said they had ever seen or heard of Mohammed Salama. That is, before they saw his picture yesterday in the news. Indeed, while his name and face are now known to the world, there remain many questions about Salama. Most prominently, did he in fact blow up the World Trade Center? And if he did, why? In Jersey City, Matt Jablo, News 12, Long Island. Now, fearing a backlash because of the arrest of Mohammed Salama for the World Trade Center explosion, Long Island's Muslim community is speaking out tonight. And News 12's Danielle Campbell is here with details on that. Danielle? Scott, leaders from the island's Muslim community cannot stress it enough. They are not terrorists, and in no way do they condone any type of terrorist activity. Imam Issa Abdul Karim, spiritual leader of the Taha Mosque in Roosevelt, says Muslims follow the teachings of Islam, which preaches peace and love. Karim says anyone, regardless of their religion, who engages in terrorist activities is deficient and weak. Uh, you, you can't blame a whole box of nails. Uh, can't throw it away just because one nail has gone wrong. Islam is not synonymous to terrorism. Uh, Islam is a religion of peace. It preaches peace. And uh, we do not uh, condone terrorism. In fact, we condemn it, uh, whether it is uh, abroad or at home. We condemn it. About 5,000 Muslims call Long Island their home. Kareem says the island's Muslims are involved in all kinds of community-oriented activities. Danielle, any repercussions uh, from this so far? So far, Scott, there has been nothing. Um, but they did take some precautions, minor that they are. They held the press conference today at the Roosevelt Community Center instead of the mosque mm. um, down the road. They just don't want to draw any attention that may be negative. But so far, things have been OK. Danielle, thanks very much. All right. Well, the other big story in our area is the weather. For the most part, Long Island fared well after last night's heavy wind and rains. But that doesn't mean all areas went unscathed. A dozen more homes were lost along Dune Road in West Hampton Beach. Our East End correspondent, Doug Geed, has been reporting on the situation there all week, and he has the latest. Just three days ago, officials predicted these houses wouldn't last long. They were right. They were among the 12 houses that were destroyed in the latest storm. This yellow house, which stood right at the edge of the inlet, it too is now gone. And this blue house, which we saw Wednesday, it didn't even make it through the afternoon of the storm. You may remember Joe and Ernest Martino of Syosset, who we interviewed the other day as they visited their house. Well, it too was washed away in the storm. To give you an idea of how the inlet is widening, see how close this house was to the ground just two days ago. This is how it looks now, the sand underneath it completely washed away. It appears as though it did get wider. Um, there was some more beach gone. Uh, there is uh, a lot more debris floating out in the bay. And uh, there is an extreme amount of debris up and down the beach on the uh, ocean side also. Now, maybe you're not too terribly concerned about luxury homes falling into the ocean, but what has officials very concerned is the geological impact of all of this. This is Mauritius Bay, and for the past three months, ocean water's been surging into it, changing its makeup. The breach, which started as a small sliver across the road, is now nearly a quarter mile wide. Experts say the influx of ocean water can dramatically change the salinity of the bay, and they're also afraid of flooding along mainland areas, including Remsenburg. Of more immediate concern to residents, though, is the nearly day-by-day -day toppling of houses. It amazes even those who have been watching the area 24 hours a day. But definitely, it's a, it's a, you know, what the, the water can do is amazing. You know, it just gets bigger and bigger every day. Well, I am still amazed at what the ocean can do. Um, Mother Nature is, she can be re very severe when she wants to be. And there's no doubt she's not through yet. In West Hampton Beach, Doug Geed, News 12, Long Island. More than 60 homes have now been lost in the area since the nor'easter in December. A federal project to plug the inlet with sand is awaiting state approval. In Nassau, the Bayville Bridge was closed to traffic most of this day. Nassau police say that during high tide, the rushing water caused damage to guardrails. Traffic was detoured. Most people had to use local streets to get into and out of Bayville. Still ahead tonight as we continue for you, the latest unemployment figures that are causing a storm of controversy in Washington. Also, the leader of the armed cult standoff in Waco, Texas, says he is no Jim Jones. And later on, some local businesses try an end run around Loco.